Hey guys, my name is John from Creation Music Company. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to wire together an IEC socket and a round illuminated rocker switch to whatever power connection you need. Remember, everything we do in this video is simply a tip. We're not electricians and we're not giving you electrical advice. Remember to always use proper safety with everything you're doing and never ever attempt to work on electrical, electrical connections with anything plugged in or receiving power. Always use caution in everything you do. To get started, you'll need an IEC socket, a power switch. Make sure that you have ones that are rated for each other. For instance, this is a 13 amp power switch and it's AC current. Don't accidentally buy one that's DC current. Next, to do it the way we're going to teach you how today, you're going to need what's called spade connectors. You're going to need one with the larger, di uh, with the larger diameter and then you're going to need five of the smaller diameter all of them having the same blade measurement. You'll also need shrink tubing. This is quarter inch shrink tube, as well as one longer piece of three inch, three eighth inch shrink tubing. The beauty of what we're about to do is everything you see in front of you right now is sold in a kit form on our DIY page. The last thing you need is whatever power connection you choose to wire in. For instance, today I'm working with our six foot right angle IEC power cable. We're using this so that we make sure we have plenty of length to, make, to wire the power supply however we want. Some of the tools you'll need to complete this task are a utility knife or razor blade with a sharp edge, wire strippers that can also crimp the spade connectors we talked about, scissors or some other sharp object. You can also use the utility knife to actually cut the power cable. A drill, this particular drill, we have a very small drill bit to drive the number four flat screws we'll be using to attach the IEC socket. An IEC socket has three blades. We have N for neutral, L for live, and the unlabeled one is ground. Okay, it's the same with every connection you're gonna use that's an AC current. What we're doing is we're wiring in a switch to interrupt the live signal. Yeah, the live signal, not that one, this one. All right, they're gonna be flipped upside down. What I wanna do is get a approximate idea of how long this connection needs to be. I can take the power supply out of, out of the picture for the moment. Next thing I need to do is I need to actually install the IEC. I don't need to screw it just yet because ours is a pretty tight fit. Same with the power connection, upside down. Next, I'm gonna wanna strip some of this cable back. So you're gonna wanna strip about two inches or so. The way I do that is I just lightly press the blade against the actual outer plastic casing or sleeving, whatever you want to call it, and score it. I don't cut through. And then as I bend it, it begins to break. The beauty of what we're doing as well is by having a cable that has extra length, I can actually cut off a section to use what I need to wire between the two versus having to go out and buying spools of wire. It's the same cable anyway. Do the same thing, and you won't need the green ground wire. Next, I wanna strip all seven ends. I'm gonna use, on this particular wire, you'll wanna check what gauge you're using. This one, I wanna use the 20 gauge strip and just strip a little bit less than half of an inch back. So maybe three eighths. Once you've stripped all the wires, before you start tying the two together, you're gonna wanna make sure you slip your first shrink tube sleeve over. Okay, I'm gonna want that to be mostly on the cable, but a little bit over, just for added support. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to take all my spade connectors. And what I'm going to do is, this black cable will be an independent one with two spade connectors for it. The white cable will get joined. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take one end of the white cable and I'm gonna conjoin it with this one. What I like to do is push them together 
and then twist. Attach the blue spade connector and crimp. This one's a, this one's a larger gauge, so I'm going to use the 16 to 10 crimper. Make sure it's tight and both of them are staying in. Next, crimp the other connections with, their, with the rest of the red spade connectors. Using the 22 to 18 gauge. Once you have all your spade connectors on, the next step is to obviously put on all your shrink tubing. Then you're going to want to use your heat gun. Once you've heated up and shrunk all of the shrink tubing, then we can start to actually connect the connections together. First, let's go ahead and attach the, the second cable, or the second wire that we made. That's going to go on the end because that's the live connection, black. Green is going to go to ground, like we discussed earlier. And the double white connection is going to go to neutral, labeled N. The white connection is going to go on the bottom. And what that does is it completes the loop to illuminate the rocker switch. If there wasn't an illuminated switch, there wouldn't be a white connection and it would just be an interrupter. The black coming from the IEC cable is going to go to the middle. And then the black coming from the IEC socket is going to go to the end connection here on top. Of course, the board is turned upside down, so it's actually on the bottom. Now, the next step is not required, but one of the things I like to do to ensure, because I use spade connectors, that these wires never pull, is I like to lock down at least the end of this cable with a cable clamp. To do so, put it on, put it in a place where it's kind of neutral as far as tension on the connections, like so and screw it directly to the underside of the board. If you'll notice that even though this is the proper size cable clamp, it's got a little bit of slack in it as far as sliding. One tip to fix that is take a single zip tie, put it through, back a ways, and cinch it as tight as you possibly can. so that it can't pull anymore without significant tension. And clip the excess. And there you have it, a clean connection. All that's left is to screw in the outside screws. And there you have it, a clean, secure IEC power connection with a rocker switch to turn on and off.